Well, hello. Uh, today we are mixing lime mortar. So we're going to show you uh, just the way that we do it. Um, there's various ways of mixing lime mortar. Gone are the days where the surfs are mixing for us all day long with a with a shovel on the ground. Um, we haven't got time or the energy for that. So we are using a cement mixer. And a cement mixer isn't the best uh, piece of equipment for mixing uh, lime mortar. Um, they do pan mixers, which are like rollers going round, um, big vertical mixers. Uh, but we we're, we're poor Yorkshiremen, so we don't have the uh, the two thousand pounds spare to buy the um, uh, the pan mixers. So we're just using a standard uh, cement mixer. Like I say, you can you can mix it on the ground. It will take a lot more effort uh, to get the same required consistency that we prefer um, for our quality of lime mortar. Uh, so these various kinds of lime mortar that you can use, it's NHL, uh, natu um, natural hydraulic lime, uh, which is a lime that has been uh, slaked already and then granulated. Uh, but in the uh, um, NHL limes, there's various kinds of different strengths, um, depending on what uh, background you're putting on, what use you're putting it on. Uh, the elements that the, the the pointing is going to be up against. Um, so, but well, the thing with uh, N NHL limes uh, is agrilisus, which means that these uh, particles of clay in it, which add to the uh, performance of the mortar, but they do reduce the breathability of the mortar. So, with a lime putty, um, all lime putty is is when the uh, the lime has come out of the the kiln is calcium oxide uh, which reacts with water in the slaking process to be turned back into well not turned back that's converted with the water into calcium hydroxide which is what we have in the mature lime putty uh, so these that one's full so this is how it turns up on site in buckets uh, so this has already been slaked and it's been, you can say there, usually it'll say on the tub, it's been guaranteed a minimum of four months maturing. So the ideal uh, duration of maturation uh, is about three years. But, um, we're, we live in a capitalist economy, so uh, we don't have the, the four years, uh, the three years, sorry, uh, to mature. So as long as it's matured for a minimum, of three months that will improve the plasticity uh, of the mortar but if you're slaking the, the mortar yourself um, always let it mature uh, under water so it's not curing for a minimum of three months so we've taken the top off and I better put my gloves on because it is caustic is lime and you will get burnt so we'll put our gloves on and if you have a look at this so so I just open the lid. For a little while. Sorry, my friend. I don't think so, no. So we've opened another tub. And if you look on top of here, look at that. So that's water. So what water does it, it stops the um, the carbonification of the lime? It creates a barrier. Uh, stops the carbon dioxide getting to the lime and curing it. So when you open the, your uh, your tub, pour off that uh, that water, and you're left with your lime putty. So it's like uh, depending on the uh, supplier or manufacturer, it, it can sometimes be like a dryer mix. Uh, but this is like cottage cheese, whipped cream. That's perfect, is that? So. We'll cover that back up because we don't need that. Mind me. Oh. That's a good point, actually. So before you put it away, make sure that you cover that back up with the water. That just stops it from carbonifying in the tub. Yeah. 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 Done with that. And 
side. It's very important when you are um, batching your mix um, to batch upon weight, not volume. So when we're mixing cement, sometimes we can gauge it with a shovel. Can't do that with lime because it will affect the performance of each individual mix and it will affect the, the finish aspect of what the mortar looks like. So we have weighed. We have weighed, already weighed this. Again, that's not right. So you see, 20 and a half kilos. So I've measured this bucket, I've weighed the bucket on its own, it's half a kilo. So we know that we have 20 kilos of uh, lime putty in there, and we've batched our mixes, so we have 20 kilos of a sharp grit sand. Uh, don't use a normal building sand or a fine building sand because in your lime mortar you need a sharp aggregate to bind it it doesn't have the tensile strength of cementitious mortars so uh, a nice grit sand would be ideal and you can put extra additions or pozzolans into that mix depending on what uh, the requirement of the job is but because we're um, doing a construction job um, lime putty is perfect so we're just using the grit sand so I'd say lime, lime will burn your fingers on you, so I look like a dialect now as I put my safety gear on. We switch the mixer on, and before we put anything in it, we just damp down the mixer. That stops anything sticking to the side, makes it easier to clean up. Switch it on. We always, we always start uh, with a bucket of sand. What? Into that, I will put half of the lime. That's another good point as well. So when we're mixing, we always put a sheet down because Granny won't be impressed if you're slopping lime all over the new flags. It just stops anything getting on the, on the floor, keeps things clean. So it does slop out of here, and it's a messy job, so Steadily, tip about half of that in. Look at that. So you can see how that's just mixing up nicely now. So we don't add any water to when you're mixing lime putty up um, because the lime putty gets concentrated with the lime uh, with the sharp sand and it will break down its so, own. So we'll just let that mix up for like maybe five minutes. Then we'll add some more sand to it. Right, so this first uh, bucket of sand has been mixed up for about five minutes. It's constituted nicely. We've got a nice slapping of that in the water in the mixer. So we'll add another bucket of sand now. Same again, we'll just leave that for another five minutes to constitute before putting the final bucket of sand in. So we're using a three to one mix. So you're using like, uh, with lime mortar, you, you're not putting anywhere near as much sand in as you would with a cementitious uh, mortar mix. Um, it obviously depends on what, the, what, the, what your project is, what the substrate is, what the weather conditions are. Um, but you can gauge the strength of the mortar that you need and anything additional that you might need to put into it. So we'll leave that for five minutes. We're gonna get a drink of water, so if it's red hot today, then we'll bang this last uh, bucket of sand in. Well, that's better. Right, so the last bucket. So before, uh, as I said earlier, with the cement mixer, it does stick to the side. Not as good an action as a forced action pan mixer. So normally after the second bucket, we'll switch it off and I'll just scrape the inside of the mixer. You can see how it's stuck to the top there. And that's like unmixed lime and sand. So we don't want that. By the time this mix is finished, uh, the, top of it, the top of the mix will be nice and clean. Then all the constituents of the mix will be combined thoroughly. So in our, in our mix then, uh, we're not left with clumps of lime or clumps of sand. 
everything's thoroughly mixed and we've got a consistent mix that will perform um, as a standard mix. So we scrape the sides like that. We'll mix it, turn it around once more. The same on the other side. Just like so. Then we're ready for our. Ah, so we've got some more lime to put in now. So on with the mixer and on with the safety glasses. As you can see, those glasses are like a plasterer's radio now, and if I didn't have them on, I'd be in A&E and we wouldn't be getting no walling done, so it's a good job I have them on. So, that's mixing up now, so all our constituents of this lime mortar mix are in that mixer doing their thing. Mixing up, making a nice creamy batch of lime mortar. So we'll come back in five minutes again clean the mixer out again and we'll see what's going on. Right, so we're back at the mixer. Uh, this has been mixing now and doing its uh, merry little thing for about half an hour, 40, 45 minutes or so. And look at the difference in the mix. Now that's, we'll just switch that off. Can't hear a word I'm saying. So that's all constituted now. It's nice and creamy. Ready to, build, ready to mix now. Uh, ready to build with. Uh, so because we've used uh, a grit sand, uh, this is ideal for um, our, uh, well, we're, we're building the wall with it. Um, we can use it as a base coat if you're lime uh, plastering or rendering straight onto the brickwork. Um, you know, you do, do what you want with it really, you know. You can leave it in the mixer and just stare at it for hours and then. Um, so this lime mortar, uh, so that is now... Um, uh, the calcium hydroxide, I, I can't just remember what it's, um, what that is now. Um, it's still, it's still calcium hydroxide mixed with the sand. So, but after we've, um, put it into the wall and, uh, built our wall with it, what will happen is that that mortar takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, uh, locks it up into the, in the molecules and that reaction of carbonification turns the calcium hydroxide uh, sorry calcium oxide back into calcium carbonate which is the original limestone that it came from so that'll um you know it's uh, ecologically sound because it's taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and as long as that mortar stays as a mortar that carbon dioxide is locked up and it's uh, entrained um into the mix so um right so we've showed you how to mix it now, so there's no reason why you, you can't have a go yourself. Um, we better have a go now, because the customer will be uh, will be complaining as to why we're standing around. So, um, yeah, right, enjoy your day.